Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for coming to the Wasabi Ventures Stables uh, uh, webinar, where we're, we're lucky enough to have uh, Gary Quill with us tonight. And Gary is going to do a session talking about classes of races um, and, uh, and, how, and what that means from both a uh, handicappers standpoint plus just in a general knowledge standpoint he'll uh, I think he's going to cover a little bit of both of that uh, for you um, and uh, just a couple housekeeping items everyone else should be on mute um, which but that's okay if you have logged into the zoom app and you have a question you can go ahead and hit the chat button at the bottom and um, and I will I will sort of be the uh, Oprah Winfrey here and sort of gather questions as they come along and and ask them for you, um, sort of moderating it. But uh, don't worry that people can't hear you um, or if uh, if you're out there and you got a loud dog or a screaming baby. Um, we actually had um, a, a webinar not too long ago where the dog actually captured someone's. Uh, laptop and was running around the house with you. so so you never really know what you're going to get when you do one of these um, but uh, but right now you're all on mute so you're fairly uh, safe from all of that so with with no further ado I will hand it over to Mr. GQ and it's your show thanks a lot uh, TK I, I got excited there for a second when you said you were going to be Oprah I thought everybody was going to get a car <laughs> yeah, that might happen too. <laughs> Not so much. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. It's a, basically a, a PowerPoint presentation about uh, understanding horse race classes. So let me see what I can do here. Um, I'm assuming everybody can see that, correct? We, we can all see it, Mr. Gary. Wonderful. All right. So I'm going to switch it up a little bit. And as, as an intro to understanding horse race classes, we know in the English language, words have a lot of different meaning. Uh, and when we talk about classes and horse racing, um, it means one of uh, many different types. So I'm going to play something as my intro, uh, which uh, is from an old uh, movie called uh, Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield. And uh, I'll just let the scene uh, speak for itself. Hello, Mr. Mellon. Are you waiting for me? Yes, I was. Look, I know I'm only a freshman, but what do you say you and I have dinner tonight? We can talk about Joyce. She's my favorite writer. <laughs> Well, you're not the usual freshman, but I'm sorry I can't. The thing is, I'm sort of going with someone. Well, where are you going? That's a good question. Actually, I'd like to join you, but I have class tonight. How about tomorrow night? I have class then, too. I'll tell you what, then. Why don't you call me sometime when you have no class? <laughs> All right. Maybe I will. So, um, with that uh, intro, I figure um, that's what we'll uh, do. We'll talk about uh, class as far as horse racing goes. So, let me uh, get back to the PowerPoint. Can everyone see this? If you cannot, raise your hand. Um, <laughs> we got it. We got it. <laughs> okay. Wonderful. All right. So, uh, we're going to talk about the different types of horse racing classes and um, what uh, we're going to talk about is everywhere from the maidens uh, all the way through stakes races and typically the, the, the races in between, the claiming races, the allowance races, the starters, they, they are much tougher to understand as far as being able to uh, kind of handicap it uh, with uh, something in mind. So I'm going to try to do something here. I'm going to get rid of, there we go. Okay. So um, let's go first through maiden uh, races. And uh, since TK is the Oprah, the, mo the modifier, if you have any questions or whatever, type them in. TK can stop me and we'll answer the questions along the way. Um, but uh, 
just want everybody to kind of digest. I'm not going to take anything for granted as far as your horse racing knowledge, as far as any type of races. So I'm just going to um, dig into all of the basics uh, as well as hope, hopefully you'll understand um, what the conditions of the race are, which are actually very important when you're handicapping a race. So let's, let's go with maiden races to start off. Um, there's different types of maiden races. There's your typical um, maiden uh, non-claiming race, which is awful, uh, typically um, called a maiden special weight. And the reason why they're called maiden special weights is because there's different weight assignments based on either the horse's sex or the horse's age. So whenever you see in the condition just uh, M -A -M -D -N, that's the maiden, which means the horse is running in a, an allowance type of condition. It's not up for sale, it's not a claimer. And um, th these are the, the best or, or the connections hope that they, these type of horses who run in these maiden uh, special weight races uh, can compete at the top level because they're not up for sale. Um, in the condition, it, it'll show that whether it's a uh, strict, uh, restricted to fillies, which is the F in the circle, and then it'll show the total purse, which is 40,000. In this first example for four and a half furlongs, it's maidens, fillies, uh, two-year-olds. The weight assignment is 120. The interesting thing about two-year-old maiden races is a lot of times, if they're not restricted just for fillies, meaning they're generally for colts and geldings, you'll see a lot of fillies competing uh, at the two-year-old level, mainly because um, just like humans in all species, um, uh, the female uh, matures more uh, quicker than the male counterpart. So it's not uncommon to see um, fillies running against colts and geldings in two-year-old races. I typically uh, take a stand against uh, fillies running against uh, their male counterpart, but when, at the age of two-year-old, um, I, I have no qualms about that. So these first two condition examples are the maiden special weight types. The second one, that's a six furlong uh, inner turf. You'll notice it's also restricted to fillies and it has the S in the box, which means it's restricted to state bred. I took this from a race at, at Belmont. And if you, you read in the condition, it's a $72,000 purse on the inner turf for maiden, fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, fold in New York uh, State and approved by the state bred registry. Each state has their own uh, restrictions as far as uh, state breads and stuff. Uh, in Maryland, which I'm uh, most familiar with, uh, they don't have state bred races but they do have restricted races for both um, Maryland bred and Maryland sired horses. And we'll talk about that a little later on. So um, when you, uh, a notch level, as far as the class, if your horse can't quite compete at the maiden uh, allowance level or the maiden special weight level, the third example down here, the mile turf, is a maiden claimer level. That's the MC maiden claiming for 25,000. And it just states that th these are for fillies and mares. You'll have the circle with the F. That's always when it's restricted to fillies and mares for three year olds and up. And the claiming price is 25,000. Um, there are some maiden races, like in Maryland, they have a $40,000 maiden claim. At claiming race that uh, the Maryland bred or Maryland sired horses uh, don't have to be up for the claiming tag or the, pri the, the price tag. So um, I know recently uh, Wasabi had a, a maiden that after her first race when she ran uh, second for 25, uh, TK and our trainer Beth Wharton moved her up into the 40,000 and since she was Maryland bred, we didn't have to expose her to be claimed for the 40,000 tag. So 
again, each state has their own rules to in order to attract horses to their races. And that's one uh, alternative to a claiming race within the maiden ranks. And then um, it, you have your bottom, it, it, even if, if a horse can't even compete at the $25,000 maiden level, um, different jurisdictions have their bottom level. In Maryland, it's $10,000. Maiden claimer, $10,000. Uh, smaller tracks like um, Charlestown, Penn National, Midwest uh, tracks, Belterra, Mahoney Valley, other of the small tracks, they'll go down as low as 5,000 maidens. So um, again, in the condition, the MC stands for maiden claimer, 10,000, and it has the condition in there. Any questions so far on maiden races? All good. Okay. All right, so so let's let's say that uh, the horse uh, uh, was able to win a, uh, their maiden race, but not against the best. They ran and they won against say uh, the twenty five thousand dollar maiden level. So the log the next logical step would be to to uh, run against winners in uh, claiming races, whether whether it be the $25,000 level, $16,000 level, or whatever. And there's different conditions within claiming races, depending on the, the, the class of, of your horse. So when we're talking about claiming races, um, there, there's, uh, I have a couple examples here. Horses coming out of winning their maiden race, they're non-winners of two lifetime races, and they're specific races for that where in, your, in the condition of the race, you'll see the claiming price, which is 16,000. The lowercase n means non-winners. The number indicates uh, what they are non-winners of, meaning non-winners of two. And the L is for lifetime. Don't ask me why the N is lowercase, but the L is uppercase. That's just the way the horse racing industry and the way the condition book works. So this particular condition, Five furlongs on the turf for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have never won two races. That's uh, that's pretty much straightforward for, and and they have different levels for non-winners of two. They have five thousand dollar levels all the way up to probably fifty thousand dollar levels based on where you're running. The bigger tracks, Churchill, uh, Belmont, Santa Anita, the large tracks they're gonna have the higher price uh, uh, claiming all the way up to probably 50 to 70,000. Uh, the, the middle range tracks like Maryland, uh, they'll, they'll have your uh, 25,000 to $16,000 non-winners of two. Now, the next example for claiming races is the six furlong fillies and mares, uh, 16,000 with a B. And, um, I see the talking heads constantly refer to this type of race as a beaten claimer. And that's absolutely 100% wrong. There's nothing in the rule of the, of the condition of this race that says, oh, these horses have been beaten, um, meaning they've lost a race or whatever. In actuality, the B stands for both or multiple conditions that are within the, this race. So let's re read the uh, condition to, to see why the B is prevalent in here versus say like our first example, non-winners of two. So this race is for fillies and mares, three-year-old and upward, which have never won three races or three-year-old fillies. Now the one thing about reading the condition of a race uh, which is always displayed in the program at the top of each race or in the racing form where you pass performances, just like the examples I've put in here, um, that the, the use of and and or in conditions some, can drive you nuts sometimes. But here's the reason why this is a B type of race, which I'm going to refer to as both or multiple conditions. The first condition is that it's for three-year-olds and upward, which have never won three races. 
and then or three-year-old fillies. So this condition is basically saying if your four-year-old, if your horse is four-year-old and up, they're eligible for this race if they've never won three races. But you could have a three-year-old who is, who's won four, five, or more times and still be eligible for this race. You'll see this type of condition in the first, usually in the first half of the year, when uh, the the uh, three-year-olds, uh, they're, they're new, new three-year-olds, meaning in January, February, and they, the racing office starts to uh, go away from horses that are restricted only for three-year-olds. So when they've won a few times, those three-year-olds all of a sudden don't have a lot of races for their connections to run them in. So uh, that's why the racing office puts together this type of race which again we go back to the maturity level in the horse's class and maturity is that three-year-olds in the first half of the year have a disadvantage against their older counterparts and as a handicapping tool for myself whenever I see a three-year-old first time in a race against what I say their elders four-year-olds and up I tend to stay away from those. I need that horse to prove they can compete in basically open company, meaning uh, horses four or five years and old and up, whereas they've been competing against their peers, the, the same age group. So this is part of the beaten claimer. There's also conditions where you could uh, have, um, this race could be non-winners of three or non-winners over the past year. So this is where the B condition comes in. And um, actually it's a, it's a deterrent for a handicapper because the B has so many different meanings. When you just see B in the past performances of a horse's uh, uh, running line, uh, it doesn't always tell the whole story. And I'll uh, talk about that later. The third type of uh, claiming condition is the one that older horses, horses who have won four times or more kind of fall into when they're not good enough to compete at the higher level, which is uh, this third type is known as open claiming, whereas all you see in the condition is CLM claiming for 12500 there's nothing else that, that says, you know, the horse has only won so many times or hasn't uh, won since a specific date. Horses in this type of race could have won maybe once, twice, or 13 times. So this is a, a condition known as open claiming. So like, like I said, older horses who, who've won a lot, this is where they fit in. Um, and then I added one at the bottom that I didn't find an example where after the claiming and the claiming price, you'll see something like this, the N1Y. This is where it's non, this def is defined as nine winners of one race over the past year or 365 days. I know years ago, um, this, uh, the N1Y, there was also conditions for horses who hadn't won in the past six months, and um, it, it would say N6M. Now, this condition is tricky as well because I know I've seen um, this condition shown as a non-winners of one in a year, but if you read the detail of the condition, it's a, it, it will give the date, um, meaning one year from the, the current race date. I've seen where it says non-winners of one year, but the date is actually only six months ago. So I have no idea who made the executive decision in the past performances in the condition book to still use the N1Y, but uh, that's something to look out for. And these type of conditions, you really have to dig into the past performances of the horses in these races to see which horse has an edge because uh, sometimes there's a, a, a race that is basically written for a horse meaning it's not in the condition book it's kind of overnight where 
the racing secretary needs to uh, write a race and, and that um, the condition book races haven't filled. So they know they have a bunch of horses on, on the grounds that fit a condition uh, such as nine winners or one in a year. And there's one particular trainer who's been trying to get their horse in a race that hasn't gone. And that horse barely fits that condition, meaning he may have won 364 days ago. So in your handicapping, you should look very closely at each horse, look at the condition and see in which way uh, the horse meets the condition. Yeah. Uh, Gary, I was just going to jump in there. Sure. Um, we had a horse <laughs> last year that um and because we've been lucky enough and 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 uh you know done the right things um we got a condition written that was five months and three days um and lo and behold the five months and three days was perfectly aligned so that our horse could run um and it was kind of done as a favor to us i think we won by i don't know four or five lengths um, because it was a it was a race done basically as a favor, um, so that so that we could uh, we could run a horse that was perfectly uh, conditioned to to run. So, as a handicapper, anytime you see a date that is a very strange date, you should look at whatever horse matches up perfectly with that date and bet the house because that means that that deal was done specifically for one horse in mind um so that's uh that's that's something to keep uh, your eyes out on when it's not um a round number like six months or three months or a year um those are things that you should look for excellent point tk and again you know the handicapping is not always about uh looking at the the last race or two it's about and and i i know so many people who go to the races and they don't even know what the condition of the race is. They, they automatically just start looking at the past performances without really dissecting what the condition says. So, um, yeah, that, excellent point, excellent um, uh, sample uh, for that. Um, so uh, once we get beyond claiming races, maybe um, you have a horse that uh, it's not as good as, uh, to, to run in the allowance races, but uh, you, you really like the horse and you don't want to, to lose the horse uh, uh, to, from being claimed. So uh, the racing office has something called a starter optional claiming race. And uh, let me just read through uh, the complication of this uh, condition and then uh, I'll dissect it for you. Um, whenever you see in in the past performances or the condition o, o c l m that means optional claiming i'll describe why they also throw in the word starter in a minute but this condition says um for fillies and mares three-year-olds and upward which have started for the claiming price of twenty-five thousand or less and have never won three races or claiming 25,000 and which have never won three races or three year old fillies claiming 25,000. That's enough to make your head spin trying to figure out that. But the reality is um, the second end in here is what splits the condition, meaning it's for horses. It's for horses which have started for a claiming price of 25000 or less and have never won three races or a race at the 25 claiming level. And which have never won three races or are three-year-olds at a 25 claiming level. So the difference as far as the starter, what, what the starter means is that the horse has already started for this claiming price. And the reason why it's optional is 
say your horse is eligible for this, but you know what? The horse has treated you well. You, you think the horse is almost out of conditions. You think it's got another good race or two in it. So even though uh, the horse has run and is eligible to be um, protected, meaning you don't have to put the horse in for the claiming tag, you might say, well, you know what? If somebody wants to claim this horse for 25000 so be it. You know, we've had a good run with the horse. But as a handicapper, a lot of times I'll look at that to, uh, to say, well, you know what, why aren't they protecting this horse? So that's just another handicapping angle. But the, the idea is when you see a race that's an optional claimer and within the past performances, right to the right of where the horse's name is, right here is where you always see the price, the claiming price for the horse, if it's eligible to be claimed, when you don't see anything there, that means the horse is not in for the tag. The tag meaning it's not in eligible to be claimed. And as far as in the past performances, in this yellow box here under rice type, this is the exact condition that this race is. And the N that follows it indicates that horse was not in to be claimed for that race. So based on the condition, this horse sipping champagne was eligible to run for this race and didn't have to be exposed to be claimed because she had run for the claiming price of 25,000 or less, as we see in her maiden races. She was up for 16,000 and 25,000. So here she's running back. Now, here's the thing that I take issue with as far as the amount of information that uh, is not available or what can be confusing as a handicapper. All right, so let's go back to the condition. This condition's for uh, horses that have started for a claiming price of 25,000 or less and, and which have never won three races. Well, look at Sipping Champagne's lifetime record. She's only won one race. And this is for races, this is for horses who have already won two. So in, in a sense, when a horse uh, it is eligible for a lower condition, meaning sipping champagne's eligible for non-winners at two, or an optional claiming race where uh, the condition would say have never won two races, Okay, there's nothing in this past performance here that that indicates that this race, the 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 last race she ran, was also for non-winners of three. In fact, I went back and looked at that race, and lo and behold, from the results chart, the condition was the same as this, but it was for horses which had never won two races, but that doesn't give you that information in here. So that's why you figure, okay, well, if she ran, you know, on the surface, you're saying, okay, she's not going up in class. She's not going down in class. She's run for the same condition the last three times, which is the same condition as today. She ran pretty good. This is a turf race again. The first time on turf going a distance, she was 35 to one. She made a nice late move. She finished third. So you'd figure, well, why, you know, finishing third's pretty good in the same condition. Um, why would she be 12 to one? And the fact of the matter is, is she's skipping a condition. She's running against horses who have already won two races and she's yet to win her second race. Uh, the, the term for horses that have only won one race, I always refer to it as she's never beaten winners, meaning the only race she's won has been against horses who've never won a race. And that's huge. And that's why TK always preaches and our trainers preach that conditions are huge. Having a horse with conditions uh, opens it up for them to run in a lot of races. Once a horse loses their condition, they're cooked. So, so I know sipping champagne didn't win this race, but if she had, 
she would have lost the condition for the non winners of two and she would have come right back in for this. So, yep. Uh, uh, Gary, I was just going to jump in about starter. Sure. Um, uh, and, uh, starters are really interesting races, but they're really interesting races when you look at claiming races. And the reason being is, is, is that often owners and trainers will run a horse in a condition to qualify them for future starter races. And sometimes they will take a chance at a level that is lower than they want to run, thinking they can sneak the horse through, not get it claimed, and then that horse will qualify for starters in the future. Um, because usually a starter condition is good for six or 12 months, um, depending on the jurisdiction and, 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 and the like. Even in some cases, two years I've even seen. But so if you can sneak there, there was a horse. There was a horse that was up at Penn that snuck in for five thousand dollars and then ran and and no one claimed it. And then it ran off and won starters left and right for five thousand dollar starter uh, races. Um, so sometimes you have to ask yourself as a handicapper: um, Is the owner trying to steal a claiming race here, or are they trying to just qualify for a condition in a future race with a horse that's slightly better than what it sounds like? Because so you also, you have to kind of think forward sometimes about the strategy. Um, the, the only other, so that's one piece. The other thing I was going to mention, and Gary's point is spot on. Of I'm not sure why you'd run the horse here because you're giving up, uh, you know, the sipping, uh, sipping champagne example here. Understand sometimes that you run horses in places that are not the perfect fit because the perfect fit isn't going to happen anytime soon um, because, you know, the race that you really want isn't going. So you have to just find a spot and run the horse. I don't know if that was the case in this case with, with Jackie Savoy, but, um, but understand sometimes – uh, as, as handicappers, we sit on the outside and say, well, why would this horse be in this spot? And sometimes the horse is in this spot because there is absolutely nowhere else to run it. And that's why it's in this spot. So um, the, you sometimes have to look at the backstory when you're handicapping to understand what's really going on. And it's a little bit like reading tea leaves of what might be happening. Right. And T TK, like to your point, maybe the condition book had – uh, a race similar for nine winners or two, and it didn't fill. And so I know this race was uh, at the end of May. And so Sipping Champagne hadn't run in over a month. And maybe uh, Jackie Savoy looked at the condition book and said, well, you know what? I, you know, she's knocking down the barn. I might as well uh, run her here because, uh, you know, for the next three weeks out, I don't see a race that uh, fits her. So might as well run her here. Plus, um, you get in good with the racing secretary, as TK knows, and then as TK said about this racing secretary will like will write a race for a horse that you have by doing favor for the uh, racing secretary, putting a horse in a, a, a race that they may not uh, be, be in over their head, but at least that's a good you know uh, gold star you get in the mind of the racing secretary for helping them out to fill a race. So as TK had said about starters, so a uh, perfect segue um, into the next uh, class level, which is the starter allowance races. And the starter allowance, as they're defined in the condition here with the ALW followed by the cl uh, claiming price that made the horse eligible, followed by the S meaning starter, this indicates that this is a condition, a race for horses who have started for a claiming price of $5,000 or less in 2018 and 2019. So like I said, this, uh, this is from May. So uh, the horse may have run once for 5,000 in January of 2018 and the horse is still eligible for this race today. It could have been running in much higher um, allowance races or whatever, but uh, because of that one race back 
in, you know, almost 18 months ago, uh, the horse is eligible. And so that, again, is a handicapping tool when you're looking at these type of races to look at each horse to say, okay, what race or races made this horse eligible for this starter uh, allowance? And a lot of times, um, this is key for like turf horses. Um, you might have a horse that just loves running on turf, but uh, in the dead of winter, the horse can't do a thing on Warri Sky um, f uh, on the dirt. So, you know what? On the turf, the horse might be worth $16,000, $25,000 level, but on the dirt, he can barely compete at the $5,000 level on the dirt. So even though people may know that, hey, this is a turf horse, nobody's going to claim a turf horse in December or January and just ha have them in the barn for about three months. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. If they feel that there's a value in claiming that horse for $5,000 so that when turf season rolls around, they can run them at a higher level and it's worth worth uh, their, their money. So those type of conditions, when you see, uh, uh, especially on the turf, um, a race where the horse, the horse ran for 5,000 on dirt, it really is comparing apples to oranges in this particular case. Yeah. And so okay. here, here's the, um, my two examples here are the lowest level for claiming 5,000. And then here's one for turf for 50,000, which is something you'd see um, at Saratoga in the summertime or uh, Churchill Downs or uh, Gulfstream Park. And um, I just thought it was interesting to show you, here's the horse that was infamously uh, disqualified from winning the Kentucky Derby. And, um, He's eligible for a starter. And uh, by virtue of his very first race, he could have been claimed for uh, 16000 He would be eligible for this second uh, race up here, the 50000 turf. If you notice that he did run in, which is basically a starter, this optional claimer, which uh, we previously talked about, and his connections didn't have to expose him to be claimed for 50,000 because he would have fit that condition of being started for a claiming price. So that means he, was, he or she was eligible to be claimed out of that race. And that's the case coming out of it. So they took a huge gamble thinking that nobody would claim the horse out of this race. The fact that he went off at uh, five to two may have said, well, you know what? He's got a little bit of ability, but I know from his workout patterns, he certainly didn't show it, but we all know uh, the rest of the story behind maximum security and what type of horse he turned out to be. So um, this is, yeah. yeah, Gary, uh, we got a question from Jeremy, and it, it's a good one. Um, okay. Please explain races where entered for $20,000 or less not considered in allowances, or, you know, the example you have in the six oh. long races uh, where entered for 4000 or less are not considered. What does, what does that okay. mean? Okay, great. Yeah, great question. Uh, in, in here where they have um, the, the allowances, um, a lot of times when – uh, they're entered for for less um, when when they're saying considered for the allowances that has to do with the weight uh, assignment for the horse when they're we're talking about you know the the, the everybody's going to carry or start off carrying 122 but nine winners of a race at a mile or, or over the turf surface since a certain date they're allowed two pounds well if if they won a race uh, in this uh, type of uh, situation, but it was for a much lower level than the 50,000, meaning in this particular case, uh, 40,000, then um, that's not considered in giving the horse uh, a weight break. So, uh, and the same in here is true as far as, and a lot of times you'll see this also for claiming conditions 
where um, it's a claiming condition. It's a $5,000 claiming race for horses who have not won over the past year. And then it'll say races where entered for 4,000 are not uh, or less not considered an eligibility, meaning that, um, and you'll see in the past performances, you'll see a horse is like, well, wait a minute, just last month the horse won at Penn National. Uh, so how does he qualify for this non-winners over the past year? And it's because that race at Penn National was for four thousand dollars or less. So they're not they're they're trying to give horses um, the ability who want to step up in class from that lower level to still be eligible for these starter conditions and also uh, claiming conditions. Hopefully that answers it. So gone through claim, maiden races, claiming races, uh, the, the starter con, optional claiming, the starters, which all mean that the horses had to run at some point in time uh, for the tag. And when you hear the word tag, it basically just means the horse is up for sale. He can be claimed or purchased out of that race. Typically, horses who, who win their maiden race in those non-claiming events, also known as allowance maidens or maiden special weights, their next step is to run in what's known as first level allowance races. Again, the horse is good. You don't want to risk losing the horse. So this is the stepping stone horse, good horses take along the way. And uh, the way the first level allowance races are shown in the condition is allowance, the purse price, and then the lowercase n, uppercase one, x. Uh, and the x is because it's a plethora of conditions that allow this horse to run in what's known as the first level allowance. So let's read the condition. For three-year-olds and up, which have never won a race other than, and this is where the X comes in, a maiden race, a claiming race, a waiver claiming race, which is basically um, a claiming race where the horse had been off for uh, X number, uh, six months or more, and the racing office allows the horse to run without being uh, eligible for the claiming price because they don't want to um, uh, have uh, the connections have the horse off for six months. And if, as long as they bring the horse back for the same claiming price as the horse last ran for six months, a year, 18 months ago, the racing office allows you to waive the claiming price, meaning you've put a lot of work into the horse without getting any of the purse structure. They don't want to, um, uh, you know, handicap you by having that horse be claimed right at right from the first start after you've had it for six months to a year off. So uh, that's what the waiving claiming is. Um, the other conditions starter, as we talked about or a Maryland sired or Maryland bred race, or which have never won two races. So in this particular case, it's basically for horses that have never won two races, but if horses have run against lesser competition, meaning maiden, maidens claiming and starters and their own against their own state bred, that makes them eligible for this first level allowance. Now the example I show here, Sonic Boomy Jet, his lifetime record, he's won four times, but all four races that he's won at has been um, uh, not at this level. And if you see, I kind of put a green box around two of them. Uh, it, you know, it only shows the last 10 races, but I went back and looked. He, he won his, you know, he, he beat Maidens uh, in his claiming race, so that's his one win. And then just prior to this bottom race for optional 25, he, he won at that level, which was probably non-winners of 
one other than optional 25. And then this next one, uh, which is the, the one on the bottom, which uh, that was his third lifetime win. Again, that was an optional claimer. So the, this, this is where the claiming comes in. And then here he won an allowance race as his fourth race he won. But this R here indicates that it was a restricted race, meaning it was restricted most likely to Maryland bred or Maryland sired races. A lot of other jurisdictions, when they have state bred races, you'll see an S in a box that precedes the, the uh, abbreviation of the condition. So that's why even though he has won four times, he's still eligible for this non-winners of one other than, that's what the, the X, you know, when you're talking about uh, a condition race, they call this non-winners of one other than, and you can see in his past performance, he's competed in this type of race four times. Down here on November 28th, he ran six, didn't do too well. Then he ran second in the same condition. He ran third in the same condition. Last time out. So he's right there against this level of horses. But the thing is, is this is on the turf and he had only run one other race on the turf. I looked up uh, how he did in this race and he didn't run well because it was on the turf. But on the dirt, he probably would have uh, done well. So this is as what they call when you see the N1X first level allowance condition. Now, as we move on, if a horse wins that uh, first level allowance condition, again, it's a stepping stone. They could either typically run against, uh, you know, stakes level horses because you figure he won a maiden special. He, he you know, if, if the first time he ran in a non allowance, non winners of one, he uh, won, uh, they might step him right up into a stakes race. Um, for other horses who can't win at the stakes level, there are these optional claiming slash allowance races where you'll see the OC, which is back to the optional claiming, gives the, per, uh, the claiming price, which is 35000 and then non-winners of two other than. And again, the condition is the same, basically the same as the allowance. But in here, in this race, the horse can, uh, is eligible to be claimed if he doesn't fit the strict condition of uh, running it for a price of 35000 If the horse had already run for a price of, of uh, 35000 or less, then um, he could run in the race without the, uh, the issue of the connections being worried that he might be claimed out of the race so that's the the next level of non-winners of two other than where reading the condition for three-year-olds and up which have never won two races other than and it's the same as the first level allowance maidens claiming waiver claiming starters or state sired or state bred or they have never won three races or have won a claiming uh, price. And then the, the, the next example is the next level. Say the horse wins at this non-winners of two other than. Very rarely, because there's not a lot of horses that fit in this condition at these high prices, but usually once a month or once every couple months, the racing office will try to have a race fill with these type of horses where um, they're non-winners of three races other than, or in this particular case, they've never won four races or for the price of 50000 And again, down here, the, the, the allowance uh, for these are actually lower than what the, the claiming price is. So the, these type of races are very rare. You, you, you don't see them that often. But there are certain horses that um, uh, they're too good to run in low-level claiming, and uh, they're not good enough to compete against the very best uh, at stakes level. 
So they kind of run here. And then there are the, the races, we've already kind of touched on them, but there's non-restricted and restricted allowance races where, um, again, we see this allowance for females, allowance, the purse is 42,000, and the B, as I say, there's multiple conditions that make the horse uh, eligible to run in this race. The condition says it's for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, which have never won a race other than mating, claiming, waiver claiming, starter, or Maryland sired, or Maryland bred. Kind of, you can say, period. That's one condition. And then the other condition is, or they've never won two races. So that's where the B comes in because they can't list it as an allowance for non-winners at two because they're including all these if, and, and buts uh, conditions. So that's whenever you see the B. And again, going back to what the past performance uh, race type shows, it's really hard to decipher what that B really means. In the second uh, example, it's very similar. And I, I actually think, and now TK, you can weigh in on this. After reading this condition, I think this is actually one of those restricted and it should have the R in the box preceding this condition because it says right from the start, it's for restricted three-year-olds and ups for Maryland bred or Maryland sired horses. Okay. So that's saying that, first of all, there, there's a restriction right there that um, the horse needs to be Maryland bred or Maryland sired. So that tells me it's not an open allowance. And then the additional condition is, which has never won a state bred or state sired race other than maidens claiming, waiver claiming, or starter, and have never won two races other than maidens on and on and on. And then the other multiple condition is this final or which have never won two races. So, um, it's an art in reading race conditions. Trainers and owners, I'm sure, are uh, experts at knowing uh, what the end and what the or placement is for, for all of these, but it can drive a handicapper crazy on yeah. trying to figure, figure yeah. out that. Uh, I, and the incredible lack of punctuation where there should be punctuation um, <laughs> will make you lose your mind. Um, we had a horse that I would have bet a million dollars would have qualified for a race about, oh, about 18 months ago. And it didn't qualify because literally the sentence was so poorly structured that you couldn't figure out where the ends or the oars were. Um, it was that bad. Um, and once again, I think what Gary is showing here is really useful stuff. Understand that you it, read the conditions very carefully because you'll, you will occasionally get a squirrely condition in here in these allowance races where a race gets specially written um, for, for someone that they're targeting for. Um, so um, these are sort of like, um, your normal bread and butter races. Uh, the, these probably came right out of a condition book. Um, but every once in a while in an extra, you'll find an allowance race where you're like, I don't know why they wrote this race this way. Um, well, I saw one the other day, not at not in Maryland, but in, a, in another state where um, t uh, it was, uh, they were allowing three-year-olds um, uh, to get a massive weight drop. They got a massive weight allowance, um, way more than the six pounds that you see here. Um, it was more like 10. And I, and I could only guess that they were doing it for one particular three-year-old um, that, that was trying to get into a race. So sometimes you, you, you pay attention to the little things. It can give you a clue. Um, uh, you could definitely get a clue on um, 
like uh, from a handicapping angle, when 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 races get written specially or conditions get written especially for one horse, and they're the only horse that qualifies for something, that's usually a sign that that's a horse that's got that's got a really good chance of winning. Sounds good. So um, so it takes us to the pinnacle of horse race classes, which are stakes races. And even though I only show two examples, there's actually a third. There are stakes races that are restricted to state breads or sires. Um, you'll see the S prior to the, the name of the race. I know um, Maryland Million Day is restricted for horses that are, are uh, horses that are sired um, in, uh, Maryland, uh, state bred, uh, if the horse, uh, you no, know, New York is big with state bred racing and, and stakes races. And that, that's a, that's a big deal when, uh, you're looking at a race and you'll say, oh, well, this horse just ran third in a stakes race. But that S just prior to that means it was restricted. So it's kind of like, you know, when you were a kid and you were like, running track uh for your uh, school and you were you were doing pretty good uh just running uh, against the people who went to your school and then as soon as you went in a race that uh had other kids from different schools all of a sudden the competition got stiffer well it's no different when you're talking about conditions of races and and why why that's tough when a horse who looks good on paper, but that the fact that they're running in, against restricted company um, makes that horse look better than maybe he or she really is. And the same way with three-year-olds um, versus four-year-olds. So um, you have your restricted stakes races and your non-restricted, even though in a way the Sir Barton uh, stakes uh, for hundred thousand dollar purse, it's restricted to three year olds, and it's also restricted in a way that it's for non winners of any open sweepstakes. Meaning, if a horse won a restricted race, a state bred stakes race, they were still eligible to run in Sir Barton. Otherwise, um, it's a way of limiting the competition. So there's kind of um, under the cover type of uh, restrictions to all races and um, uh, just reading, you know, these couple sentences within each race uh, before you start handicapping to see who you think uh, can be the winner. Uh, it can be huge and you can pick out things for that class. Um, and then the best of the best horses run in what is known as graded stakes races. For some reason, there are three levels, or at least in North America, there are three levels of stakes races. You have grade three, grade two, and grade one. Grade one is the best of the best. And uh, jurisdictions, um, there's a, jo uh, you know, a jockey club in Kentucky that dictates um, uh, the standing of uh, a race, whether it deserves grade one status or it should be grade two or grade three. And they base that on the quality of horses who have recently run in this particular race in the past. Well, obviously the Kentucky Derby is always going to be a grade one race, but strangely enough, one of the prep races uh, on the Derby Trail, which is the Wood Memorial, um, a race that through history was a major prep race, very prestigious prep race leading up to the Derby. Um, that, over the last couple years, was actually downgraded to a grade two for the sole purpose that there hasn't been a horse um, who has exited the Wood Memorial to have won the Kentucky Derby or even go on to be a quality racehorse. So um, there's a, a board uh, from the, the jockey club 
that dictates the grades of, of different races. Uh, and so whenever you're looking at a graded stakes race, um, a grade one is the best of the best. A grade two is, you know, just a, a notch down. And a grade three is kind of the first level of the graded uh, stakes races. Um, and so uh, the interesting fact of, say, uh, the Kentucky Derby, uh, it's a th it was a $3 million purse. And um, you notice here that uh, there is a $25,000 entry fee and then an additional $25,000 to actually have your horse start. So just bare bones going in, it costs $50,000 just to have your horse come out of the starting gate at Kentucky Derby. Whereas um, the Kentucky Derby, um, we see every year anywhere from 17 to 20 horses coming out of the starting gate. Uh, the purse structure is such that it only pays out the first five finishers. The fifth place finisher gets $90,000. So anybody who ponies up $50,000 to go into the Kentucky Derby, uh, if, they, if they finish sixth or worst, they're coming away with zero which brings up another um, answer to an argument of the controversy in this year's Derby. And I didn't have a, a, a dog in this fight, so I feel like I'm, I don't have a biased opinion. You know, everybody uh, uh, jumped on um, War Will's jockey for not claiming foul, even though he was the one who was interfered with. And the fact that War Will finished seventh by claiming foul, the most he could have been moved up was one spot to sixth. So the connections weren't going to get anything out of it anyway. So right or wrong, there really wasn't any reason to claim foul against the, the horse, but that doesn't hold water uh, in a lot of races or whatever. But I just brought that up as a the fact of the matter is I know uh, us at Wasabi are spoiled. There's a lot of the races that uh, Wasabi horses run in, um, regardless of where they run, at least you get a, a little bit of scratch uh, in the purse money. But uh, a lot of races uh, only pay down to the fifth place finisher. So um, that's a little uh, education there as far as purse structure goes. Uh, so um that's from soup to nuts, uh, the classes of horses from maidens all the way up to grade one stakes races. But I wanted to end this um, just with a, an example that I came across just uh, at the end of the Pimlico meet. Um, as far as horse classes, when does a horse age matter? And the example here is a maiden, maiden bottom level bottom level maiden race for 10,000. And I just uh, wanted to show some, some aspects of it. So it was maidens for three-year-olds and up, okay? And um, I circled the horse ages here. Uh, this first horse, hunk of rock, five-year-old, which is very rare for a horse making its first career start five years old. Um, he had, shows a lot of workouts going back two years, and then he was off for almost uh, a year and a half before he got back on the track and worked out. In green box, I, I noted that this trainer has done well with first-time starters, and the return on investment is good. So the fact that a five-year-old is running against some three-year-olds kind of uh, – is something to think about, even though typically if you have a horse running in for 10,000 claiming first time out, you may not think that much of him. But again, the breeder here, and it just goes from knowing um, the circuit, um, this breeder who um, uh, she kind of is all about the breeder bonus. So uh, she could care a lot less uh, if somebody's going to claim the horse because she's going to continue to um, get uh, uh, the, the purse money, the breeder bonus, whenever. So, 
So that's just a, another thing to consider when you're handicapping. So the, these next two horses, they were all three-year-olds. And as I had mentioned before, look at the, the races they've run in, all right, both of them. And this first red box over here will tell you the age class that they're running against. When you have two or three-year-olds and there's nothing in the age class, that means they were just running against their peers, meaning all three-year-olds. So, so both of these horses here, who were lower odds than the, the, the top one, if you notice, the first time they ran against older horses was in the same condition in their last race. And if you look, this horse wound up running fifth, and this one ran, wound up running fourth, and they both went off at much lower odds than I would have thought when they're running first time against older uh, horses. And again, we're talking springtime, and both of these horses ran in April. When you're talking about three-year-olds in end of summer, end of the year running against older, the maturity level doesn't come in. So keep, keep these three horses in mind as we go to the next three. Uncle Shaggy's a six-year-old. He's been floundering around in this condition for a while, running against older or whatever, and really hasn't been doing all that much. Here's a horse five to one. Here's a four-year-old. He's been running pretty good, even though the connections who haven't done well, they don't have a lot of money and they're not betting on the horse. But all of a sudden, this last race, the, something changed with the horse. Maybe it was the jockey, the change of jockey, but it ran second last time out. And he's a four-year-old running against three-year-olds. Here, here's a horse who I think went off as the favorite. He's a three-year-old. He has never run against older company. All of his races have been against three-year-olds. And he was made the favorite because of the class drop, which I don't quite understand because actually, if you look two races back, this race, for some reason, I don't even know why they ran him in this race. Again, it might be they just need to get a race in. Maybe the racing secretary needed the race to go. So they're like, okay, fine, we'll, we'll put him in the race. And he ran as expected, not so well. But it was against three-year-olds. So keeping that in mind, we had three three-year-olds who all looked better on paper and were bet as such. And then we had a five-year-old first-timer, a four-year-old who had run second last time out, and then the six-year-old who really hasn't done much uh, at all. And so we go and look to see how the race turned out. The five-year-old first timer won and paid 40 bucks. The horse that had run second his last time out, who was also older than three, ran second and it returned a nice exact, uh, and that's for a dollar. So it was basically a $480 exact for horses that if you really dig deep into um, the condition of the race, the condition of the horses. And as you can see in, in the red triangles, I noted where the three-year-olds all ran and at what odds they ran at. So that's how I wanted to end this presentation to show you that other than just the condition or part of the condition, you can find tons of value uh, in many different ways in, in, in horse racing. So um, I appreciate everyone's uh, patience and time. We actually ran nine minutes over, but um, if TK wants to turn it over to any questions, uh, feel free. Yeah, I, 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 I actually thought it was very thorough. Um, Gary, so um, I didn't have any questions, and uh, and and uh, I think uh, I think uh, I think we'll we'll close it up because uh, it was it was uh, it was incredibly thorough. It was well done. Awesome. Well, thanks. Appreciate everybody uh, who participated, and uh, hopefully, uh, um, everybody learned something. Yep. Everybody have a good night. Thanks again, TK. Take care. See you, Gary. Bye.